Hello and welcome back to the reading of Beginner's Guide to Sri Vaishnavam. We are on chapter 11 and this is about Kulasekra Arvar. Vyasa and Parasara go to Andal Pati and ask her to continue the Arvar stories. Pati says, Vyasa and Parasara, today I am going to tell you about a king who is an Arvar. Vyasa, who is that Pati? What is his name? When and where was he born? What are his special qualities? His name was Kulasekra Arvar. He was born on Masi month Punarpusa Nakshatram in Tiruvanji Kalam, which is located in Kerala. He was born in a Kshatriya family. What does Kshatriya mean, Pati? Kshatriya means administrators generally, like king, emperor, etc. They rule the kingdom, protect the citizens, and so on. Oh, just like our Rangaraja, who rules us and protects us in Sri Rangam. Yes. Our Permal is the king for everyone, but each region is ruled by a king and these kings are greatly respected by the local people. Coming back to the history, as he was born in Kshatriya family, he was feeling that he was the controller, fully independent and so on. But by the grace of Sriman Narayanan, he became fully realized that he was dependent on Permal and developed great taste to listening to the glories of Permal and also taking care of the devotees of Permal. Parasara asks, Pati, I remember you telling that we should be like Madhurgavi Arvar in serving devotees of Pirmal. Was he like that, Pati? Very nice, Parasara. Yes, Kulasekra Arvar had great attachment to Sri Ramayanam. See, in our Sampradayam, Sri Rama is lovingly called as Pirumal. Due to Kulasekra Arvar's great attachment towards Sri Ramayanam and Sri Rama, he himself becomes to be called as Kulasekra Pirumal. He would listen to Sri Ramayanam every day from great scholars and be immersed in the incidents. Once, when he heard that Sri Rama was attacked by 14,000 Rakshasas, he became disturbed so much and called out for his army to go and assist Sri Rama. The devotees of Pirmar would then pacify him and tell him that Sri Rama had already defeated the Rakshasas single-handedly. Vyasa asks, how did he rule the kingdom party if he was fully engaged in hearing about Pirmar? Andalpati says, yes, that is a very good question. He was unable to focus on the kingdom. His ministers planned to eliminate his attachment towards Bhagavadas, who are devotees of Pirmal. They stole the necklace of Pirmal from his temple in the palace and told him that it was stolen by the Bhagavadas. He did not believe the words of the ministers. It was an ancient practice of proving one's words by putting their hand in a pot which had snake in it. One must be very confident about the truth and very brave to do this. He asked them to bring a pot which had a snake inside. He boldly put his hand inside the pot and proclaimed that the Bhagavadas were innocent. That is very nice, Pate. Yes, also, just like Sri Rama had great attachment to Periya Parmal, Sri Ranganada, Kulase Grarvar was also greatly attached to Periya Parmal and Sri Rangam. What is the relationship with Sri Rama and Periya Parmal, Pate? Pati says, Periya Parmal was Thiruvaradhana Parmal of Sri Rama in Ayodhya. Thiruvaradhana Parmal means the Parmal whom we worship at home. So in his palace, Sri Rama worshipped Periya Parmal. But he gave that Parmal as a gift to Vibhishana, who was his dear devotee. When Vibhishana was carrying Periya Parmal to Lanka, he stopped at Sri Rangam to perform Sandhya Vandanam. After his Sandhya Vandanam, when he wanted to continue his journey to Lanka, Periparmal said to Vibhishana that he liked this place so much and just wanted to stay here facing south side where Lanka is. Vibhishana agreed to Periparmal and left to Lanka without him. Thus, Periparmal arrived at Sri Rangam and continues to stay here till now. Parasara says, Oh, very nice to hear this party. We did not know this connection between Perumal, Sri Rama and Periparmal before. Party says, so, Kulasekra Arvar also had great attachment towards Sri Rangam and Periya Parmar. He wanted to visit Sri Rangam every day from his kingdom and would leave from there. But his ministers would stop him by giving him some reasons, one or the other, so that he can continue to rule the kingdom from there. Eventually, he gave up his kingdom and reached Sri Rangam. He sang Parmal Thirumuri in glorification of Emberman and stayed in Sri Rangam for some time. Finally, he left this world and reached Paramapadam to serve him permanently. Vyasa says, Pati, 
the more we hear about arvars the more we know about perumal since their lives are so fully focused on perumal andal pati says yes we should also focus our lives towards perumal and his devotees now let us go to kulashekara arvar sanadi and have his darshan sure pati let us go now this chapter tells us about the life history of kulashekara arvar who was a king he was a staunch devotee of shri rama he was a king who was not attached to his material life he was not attached to the possession his throne his wealth he ruled as it was a duty given by bhagavan his mind was only towards bhagavan so towards shri ranganath shri ram shri srinivas he was involved in ramayana very much whenever ramayana was told as discourse in his uh, court his mind is to travel to ramayana period and he used to be involved with rama's life too much and rama appeared in his dream and gave him the title kulashekara perumal because he was very much devoted to shri rama and he used to visit shri rangam and do service to bhagavan and bhagavatas he was a king known for simplicity and he used to love the devotees of vishnu whenever he visited shri rangam he used to bring the devotees of vishnu to his palace and did service to it them which was not liked by his ministers so they blamed them for the theft of necklace but kulashekar alvar proved that they were non guilty then he got detached to all this and he handed over the possession to his son his son was made a king and he left the palace for stay rangam he stayed in stay rangam for some time and he visited tiruvenkadam and he did mangala sasanam on these permals is sanskrit shlokams known as mukunta mala it is about bhagwan's namas and the glory of shri man narayana and its attributes and guna as beads of mukunta mala so that's a beautiful sanskrit mukunta mala was composed by kulashekar alvar and he sang 105 pasurams which are together known as permal tirumadi he wanted to be something in uh, tirvengadam so he expressed that in one of the pasurams in permal tirumadi chediyale valvinegal theerkum tirumale nediyane venkadava nin kuvilin vaasal adiyarum vaanavarum arampayarum kidathiyangum padiyai kilan kidandu un pavalavai kaanbene he expressed his devotion he wanted to be something in the a place of tirvengadam because he want he would be with srinivasar all the time that was his love that was his devotion towards him so is mukunta mala in sanskrit celebrate the greatness of bhagavan namas and tiruvai mali on all the divya desams like sri rangam tiruvengadam and other places so kulashekar alvar lived his life in a very simple way and he after he renounced his possession he visited the divya desams and he spent his life only in doing service to bhagavan and singing in praise of bhagavan